If you watch YouTubers talking about dividend investing, you may have come across the channel, The Joseph Carlson Show. And he is one of actually my favorite dividend YouTubers on the platform. And I agree with him on a lot of his approaches. However, there's one particular approach that he has for beginners that I disagree with. So in today's video, I go over his approach versus my approach. And again, just to be clear, I do like his approach for beginners. However, I think my approach is even better for those who do not mind doing a little bit of work. I also update you guys on my M1 uh, finance dividend portfolio. And finally, we talk a little bit about news, Apple hitting the $2 trillion market capitalization. All right, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Abdul. On this channel, I talk about dividend investing and personal finance. That is making money, saving money, and growing your long-term wealth. My goal is to share my journey of growing a dividend investment portfolio that generates passive income with the ultimate goal of financial independence. Okay, So if financial freedom or financial independence is something that interests you, I will recommend you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so that you could get more videos like these every single week. So like I said, I do like Joseph Carlson's approach for most beginner investors. However, I think my approach is even better for beginners who do not mind doing a little bit of work. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will demonstrate uh, his approach versus my approach and compare both uh, the pros and cons for each of these two approaches okay so let's start with joseph carlson's approach okay let's go on to his youtube page okay so when you come here to youtube you click on any one of his videos usually the latest video and then go on to the description you could get to his portfolio okay and this is where it all begins okay so here we are so with according to joseph carlson's his approach is that if you are a beginner and you are interested in using uh, his portfolio he's not necessarily recommending that you do use it um, but if you are going to use his his portfolio which he makes public to you know, anyone who's interested in using it you could click on that link uh, that says view my portfolio and it will bring you to somewhere over here which is an M1 platform okay so currently he has about 34 companies in his portfolio so what he suggests is that you take this 34 companies and you slice it down to say 10 companies that you think are good fit for you okay and with that 10 company you would open your account with m1 finance and on a consistent basis you uh, deposit money to be invested into those company and the way m1 finance works is uh, if you have the auto invest turned on whenever you deposit money into it based on the asset allocations so like for him right in his tech he has about uh 29 percent and then 15 percent for real estate and so on and so on so mm -hmm. if you have those same allocations and let's say every single week you decide to put hundred dollars into the account what will happen is that that hundred dollars will be put into each of these different sectors with this target allocation so if you so again if you have let's say uh, you deposit $100 every single week uh, using this particular target allocation. So $29 of that will be put into the tech sector, okay? So that's his approach um, to doing it. And for me, one of the pros I think about his approach is that, yes, you reduce the amount of companies to 10, right? Okay, and then um, it still diverse, diversify enough for you to not necessarily lose all your money in one company, okay? So that's the good thing. The, the con is that when you look at the disadvantage of that is that because you are starting with such a small amount of money, $100, and then you take, let's say, again, in this particular example, 29%, which is about $29, right? And you put that into the tech, that's gonna go and buy uh, all the companies in the tech, right? So let's say even right now, within that tech, there are four different companies, okay? So that $29 is then gonna be divided into all the different four companies, 
okay and so you are in a, gonna end up getting about very minute shares of these companies like apple for instance is very expensive right now it's about over four hundred dollars right now okay so if you have if you put twenty nine dollars into the tech sector and then is then even going to take that twenty nine dollars and take 60 percent to be put into apple you are only going to be left with so much money so that is the con that i see with that and the whole point of dividend investing is that you want to get the dividends so that you can reinvest it into your account okay uh, you can reinvest it into the account so that you can get more dividends and then you compound it so now on to my approach with a twist on joseph carlson's approach so my approach is that yes if you do your own due diligence and you like these the companies within his portfolio and you are trying to emulate that what i suggest is that take those 10 companies that you've narrowed it down to put it in your m1 finance portfolio and you turn off the uh, auto invest okay and then every single week when i deposit that hundred dollars in there it's not going to automatically just invest it small pieces into all the different companies okay what it does is the hundred dollars will be sitting in there until i come and then i decide to buy a particular stock so that's why i said it does require a little bit of work so how do i decide which stock to buy this takes us to uh this website called seekingalpha.com okay so what i do is that i come into seeking alpha i create an account with them and that allows me to create uh, different portfolios right so over here you see m1 finance account that I, I created a portfolio over here you click create portfolio and then you title it whatever portfolio you want um, the name and then you add the stocks that you want to track okay so this one I call it m1 finance account and I input it all the different stocks that I want to be tracked to that I want to track okay so what I do is how do I decide each week which stock to buy so that I can get the dividends as quickly as possible and as big as possible. So what I do is I come here, I click dividends, okay? So when I click the dividends, it then uh, it, does, it does have this uh, X dividend date. So I click that, right? And then that organizes the X dividend date in an order. And the X dividend date, if you are not familiar or if you forgot, is basically the date that you need to own the stock by so that you can get the dividend okay so what i do is i come down today is the 20th august 20th right so what i do is i come down to the next closest x dividend date so here we are the next closest x dividend date is uh august 24th 2020 and the company does has that ex dividend date is J and J, which is Johnson and Johnson. Okay, so I then click on it, Johnson and Johnson, right here, um, and then it tells you. Then you can look into the stock a little bit more about it. The current price is uh, one hundred and fifty-one dollars, and how much are they paying in dividends? You click on dividends. Let's see. So here you see the dividend yield is. 2.69% which is not bad at all that's pretty good anything between 2 to 4 percent is pretty good um, and then the payout amount they're paying is for the year is, is going to be about four dollars and four cents however for this next ex dividend date which is the August 24th they are going to be paying a dollar and one cent for every share that you have of this company okay so and also if you look at the payout ratio it's 51 and 35 percent which is again really good and dividend growth it has been 57 years of consistent dividend growth that's a crazy long time of dividend growth so that's a good good sign all these are showing you some good signs okay and then you could go into the dividend history you don't even have to do that since it already showed us so as you can see it's consistently the dividends they've been going up every single year consistently it's been going up for the past 57 years that's that's a good sign
okay so I do that and then I go on to um, the website so Johnson & Johnson I went on to the website this allows me I think my approach allows me to learn more about the companies to know exactly what the company they do and um, uh, have it just a better understanding of the company so I decide that is the stock that I'm gonna buy if that wasn't a good stock to buy then I'll just look at the next um, the next ex dividend date in this case is Nextra Energy which is on August 27th okay but in this particular case for this week I actually decided to get J and J Johnson and Johnson so those are the two approaches now let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on my approach versus Joseph Carlson's approach like I said I don't necessarily think his approach is I think his approach is really good I just think mine is a little bit better for beginners so mm -hmm. now on to the weekly updates for my portfolio uh, my dividend portfolio if you come in uh, Abdul's passive income so this is week four of the dividend investing challenge and um, I invested and I deposited another um, hundred dollars from my bank account into this account and using my approach that's what I, I decided to buy Johnson & Johnson okay so if you look at the activities section over here um, right here I mean it doesn't really there we go for yeah so if you see here I bought one and I sold I sold one stock I bought one stock and I sold once so I bought Johnson & Johnson at one hundred and eleven dollars and twenty cents and then I sold coca-cola for one hundred and fifty I mean one dollar fifteen cents so that is that um, oh and if you didn't see my last video I actually got my first dividend last week um, that I made a video about it you should go check it out uh, so I, I got a dividend from our realty income okay for two cents and I also got uh, 23 cents from Apple um, and if you remember about two weeks ago actually that's when I bought Apple and again the, I used this same approach because I knew Apple their ex dividend date was coming up soon so I went and bought Apple and that's when I got last week I got the dividend for that so because of that 23 cents and the 20 and the two cents over here I had 25 cents to invest uh, so that I can compound it. So that's why I like my approach. It kind of lets me get the dividends as quickly as possible and as big as possible so that I can then reinvest it into the market to hopefully compound it as quickly as possible. Again, the, the downside is it's not as properly um, diversified starting up, but over time is going to get a little bit more diversified because as you saw like I said last week um, I bought Apple right and then uh, this week I'm buying uh, Johnson & Johnson okay so those are two different sectors Apple is in tech Johnson & Johnson is in healthcare and finally Apple is in the news for becoming the first company in the world to hit two trillion dollars which is absolutely bonkers that is crazy amount of money that is way more money that Apple has in value compared to a lot of countries in the world they are GDP so let's just compare that apples to apples <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> um, if you compare it apples to apples look at this the United States has the GDP for the United States is 19.48 trillion dollars right and uh, China is the second one to have 12 trillion trillion dollars 12.2 trillion Japan 4.8 trillion Germany 3.69 trillion um, India 2.65 trillion uh, United Kingdom 2.63 trillion you get the gist and on and on and on and then Apple I guess beat all the <laughs> what it's only eight eight company I mean eight countries Brazil is the last one that has two trillion above two trillion in uh, GDP so apart from these eight companies the rest of the world all those countries Apple 
value is more than their GDP and that is absolutely crazy to me um, but I mean again that's a good thing because I bought some Apple shares last week and yeah so I got some some of those dividends and that's I guess the good thing about um, owning stocks okay so I encourage you guys to take a look um, do a little bit more research on your own decide if this is something you would like to get involved in um, and sort of just standing on the sideline as the motto on the channel is to always stop waiting and start doing so the takeaway for today is joseph carlson's approach is good but i think my approach is even better as it allows you to get the dividends much more quickly and at a slightly bigger uh, chunks okay and also number two is that make sure if these things don't be sitting on the sidelines make sure you get involved these companies they are going to continue to make money and either you participate or you get left behind if you found any value in the video make sure to subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and until next time stop waiting start doing and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video peace and love to all of you out there